Hey guys, we're at AJ's doing a little grocery shopping. Look at all the tropical fruit. Ooh, I love dragon fruit. Coconuts. Welcome to my dining room. This is the first time I think I've ever done a sit down video out here. So hopefully it's not too echoey, but we're just gonna get right to it. As you can see by the title, we are doing a grocery haul, but I wanted to also include some of the staple items that we almost always have in our cupboard, even if I didn't just buy them in this last grocery shopping, just to give you a kind of a overall, um, I guess just an overview of what we have in our vegan kitchen, what we like to keep stocked in there. We're gonna start in the front here with the nuts and seeds. Now, a couple of these I do keep in the fridge just because their oils can be sensitive. You know, certain nut oils can be sensitive to heat and they can end up going rancid. So I do keep the like Brazil nuts, for example. I keep those in the fridge because they are heat sensitive. And Brazil nuts are very high in selenium. So that's, uh, but it only takes a little bit. You can have like one or two and that's your, that's your whole quota for selenium for the day. So I normally just pop like one of those a day and you know, they're, they're high in fat too, they, you know, nuts and seeds. I try to go for mostly seeds to get a lot of my fat content because then it's super high in the omegas too. So some of the seeds that I like to have are like hemp hearts and then also chia seeds, probably my my number one favorite, I would say, right along with flax seeds. Flax and chia are like the best as far as the omega three to six ratio. They're actually higher in omega threes than six, which is pretty rare for any seed or nut. And then in third place would be hemp hearts, which are still really good, very good ratio. I think it's like four to one in favor of omega six. So anyway, um, so for purchasing these, um, I normally buy this bag from Nutiva at Costco of chia seeds. So those are my favorite seeds, but when it comes to nuts, macadamia nuts are my number one favorite. Um, however, they're, well, I should mention this also, they don't cause me any breakouts, which is rare for nuts. Like most nuts trigger an acne breakout for me, but these, nothing. So they're, they're, I mean, they're, and they're my favorite as far as like taste wise goes too. I forgot to mention, I was just gonna start talking about the dates, but I forgot to mention these are the Royal Hawaiian sea salt macadamia nuts that we buy from Costco, but they are still pricey. So I don't like to like, it's a splurge for us and I don't like to spend uh, very much money. I'd rather go for like the seeds. The seeds are a better deal and I can stretch out. It's like stretching out your fat versus getting your fat all in like one go because I could eat probably half a bag of these um, in a single sitting and not blink an eye. Like <laughs> that's that's how like addictive, um, you know, nuts can be. Uh, I'll just mention this real quick. Before I started using chronometer and tracking all my nutrients every day, I didn't realize how high of fat diet I was eating. It, it was it was quite high. And so I realized, okay, I need to I, I need to scale it back for my health, you know? So I'm more focused on eating like a lot of greens and getting my fat from the seeds because the seeds have the omegas that we need, right? The omega threes. So that's kind of where I like to stretch out my fat with my seeds, like chia seeds, flax seeds, and scale back more on the more of the empty calories. Um, not that nuts are empty calorie, but they're extremely high calorie, high fat for not as nutrient dense compared to seeds, you know? We're gonna move on to some dried fruits. Dates are probably my most, actually they are absolutely my most favorite dried fruit, although they're actually fresh. So um, technically they are fresh. They seem like they're a dried fruit because they're all like shriveling kind of wrinkly, but they are a fresh product. So we've got these um, medjool dates. We get these at Costco. Normally people just walk up to the palette of dates at Costco and just grab one and throw it in their cart, right? But I'm, I'm there picking these out like I'm, like I'm shopping for peaches or something, right? Like I'm, I'm looking at them. I know what I'm looking for and I want them to be slightly juicy, plump, large, um, not dried out. You can tell when they're dried out. So I normally like to take a look, but you don't want them too juicy because then they can kind of almost go a little 
they can go off a little, you know, you don't want any fermentation going on in there um, because that can make them a little, they'll, they'll taste a little weird. You're, you won't be sure what you're tasting, but you can just tell it's like not, not right there, you know, like it's either past its prime of ripeness or whatever happened, you know, or it was too wet or something. Dates are very high in a lot of minerals and nutrients, so. Uh, but the other thing is they're also very high in sugar and calories. So I do end up getting like if I make a smoothie with these like using four to six dates like six dates max normally in at a time you know if I'm doing a smoothie even that's getting a little sweet now because once you start changing your taste buds and you're, in, you're incorporating more greens leafy greens more bitter stuff your taste buds start adjusting right and you don't want things as sweet as you wanted before when say you were coming from like the the sad diet right standard American diet so anyway you're, it's amazing how quickly your taste buds start adjusting to it's like three weeks time your taste buds have already started changing even a green smoothie, dropping a date in there, you know? So in case you get bored with bananas, drop a date in there and it's delicious. Um, so here's another type of dates. So those were the Majules from Costco and these are the Hadley uh, Digletnor. Don't know if I'm saying that right, but they are also delicious. Um, these are pitted dates. Michael really likes these. Um, this is one of those impulse buys. We just, we saw them in the produce section. We were at AJ's market aj's fine foods it's like a it's a fancier grocery store um it's up here in tucson at la encantada uh, which is a you know really nice area very posh if you know you feel very fancy shopping in there it's all like low lit and everything i love going up there but we kind of only like you know look around and maybe buy a couple of things they still have good deals but it's just not where i do like the bulk of my grocery shopping right I like bargains and I want everything as cheap as possible. I want the best quality produce for the cheapest prices I can find. Okay, so these dates, it says pure palm produce, chopped dates in big print, and then it says pure nourishment, pure goodness, pure perfection. I got home and I had a little pinch of them and I was like, wow, those are, those are really good, but wow, those are really sweet too. Huh, let me take another look at the packaging. And down here in tiny print, it says the ingredients, dates, and dextrose. I did not see that it had dextrose when I got them. So um, watch out for those uh, impulse buys, double check ingredients. Sometimes it's really hard to see because they put everything else in big print, making it look all you know pure and nourishing and good. And then in the micro print down here at the bottom, it tells you, uh, you know, an extra sweetener that's in there that you don't want. Dextrose, if you don't know, is a sweetener derived from corn. And so if you've got a corn allergy or, you know, grain allergies or something and corn affects you, you don't want dextrose, right? So I don't, I'm not into eating dextrose on my dates. I like dates just plain and that's it. Okay, so dried fruit is really fun to have. You know, it's, it gives kind of like a jerky texture sometimes. It's just kind of fun to have um, a chewy, chewy dried fruit item, you know? But it can be easy to overeat because it is a sweet treat. So I keep this at a minimum. Like I'll have one serving of dried fruit a day, you know? For the dried fruit, one of my favorites is mulberries. Uh, the best price I found at these on these were at Natural Grocers, but I, I know that you know Whole Foods carries them, I think, and also Sprouts carries them. But yeah, they can, you know, dried fruit can be a little pricey too. I wish Costco would carry these in a big pack. That would be awesome. But yeah, mulberries are good because they're high in calcium. So if you're gonna snack on a dried fruit, you know, it might as well be something that has some nutrients in there for you, you know? And then figs are really good. Michael and I bought these at Costco and we've gotten them several times now, but they're they're really delicious. And I, I mean, fresh figs are the best, right? But um, they're not they're not always available all times of year. So it's nice to be able to get them dried too. So you can have them when they're not in season. This watermelon jerky from Trader Joe's. This is really sweet. It's it's too sweet for me. I probably, I won't be buying it again. You know what it tastes like? Um, I actually, I don't really want to eat any of this right now. I just want to show you guys what it looks like. So if you see this in Trader Joe's, then you'll know. But I mean, you can try it if you want, but it's really, really sweet. I mean, like it tastes to me like cotton candy if cotton candy was flattened down and had a little bit of like jerky texture to it. There's so much of the dried fruit that contains sugar, added sugars, just, you know, double check the ingredients and just make sure that you're going for just the pure fruit 
and it's sweet enough as is it doesn't need any added sugar on top of that so i know a lot of like blueberries cranberries and stuff that i see at costco um they add sugar to that and so i don't ever buy that stuff but yeah sometimes sometimes you can get some some good varieties of dried fruit though. so those are our favorites and a a fun thing to try, but uh, not not so much a, a favorite at all there. Okay, so I also wanted to share some of the transitional foods, um, you know, plant-based options or alternatives, you know, meat alternatives, and I also have some dairy alternatives here too. Um, just for anyone who is wanting to kind of transition, but you need those kind of stepping stones in between, which I used to eat um, some of this stuff too, but then I, I just stopped because I it was it was truly a transitional food for me and then i wanted to move on to you know whole food eating whole food plant-based eating a lot of the foods have ingredients in there that triggers uh, acne for me so it's kind of like win-win you know i used it for a short time for transitioning and then i moved on to what uh, is promoting more uh, health for me. Anyway, so that's my story of eating the transitional foods. Michael just eats them because he, he likes them. He enjoys them. He enjoys, you know, the Boca burgers, the meat alternatives, um, smoky maple bacon. I think this is, what is this? Smoky tempeh strips, bacon, bacon. So he likes those, um, you know, faux meats and stuff from Light Life. And then there's uh, tofurkey is another one that he gets like the, the lunch meats. If you are wanting to transition, but you want to use those little stepping stones to help you kind of get from point A to point B, you know, and eat more plant-based, these can be really helpful. They're fun, you know, because you can still feel like you're eating a, a burger. Um, here's some Trader Joe's potatoes, hash brown, or wait, are these hash browns? Tater tots, I guess. So Michael loves um, potatoes, all kinds of potatoes in every shape and size and form. Oats, those are good for you uh, if you can handle grains. So he always has Quaker oats around. And then a couple of, oh, okay. I will show you one of my favorites that I haven't had in a long time that we found at National Grocers. This is Butler Soy Curls. And these are just dehydrated tofu basically it's dehydrated down soy and you just re-soak it in water and it plumps up it's basically like it becomes like chicken strips this the texture everything and you can season it however you want and it would be the best chicken like shredded chicken tacos um plant-based that is no chickens were harmed i don't know if it's going to be something i'm gonna keep in my diet or if it's just gonna be like a random treat that i'm gonna try out again because it's been so long since i've had them okay the best mac and cheese you guys Daya. Like this hands down is so freaking delicious. It is the best mac and cheese I've ever had in my entire life. That goes for when I was actually eating that when I was younger. But um, yeah, they nailed it with this. Uh, this is the cheddar style. They have different styles, but cheddar style, that's the, the number one. So Michael eats these. Um, I, I was eating them like a, you know, a couple years back and I, I had to stop because it's got yeast in there and I can't eat like yeast. So yeah, that's, see, that's the thing. It's like most of the packaged products, I'm not even able to eat if I wanted to because there's always an ingredient in there that I'm, I have an intolerance to or a sensitivity to. And then prickly pear products here. I got really into eating prickly pear, the fruits and the pads, because you can, you can eat both the prickly pear cactus. Um, although if you're, if you're going to go out and harvest them on your own, you need some like tongs or gloves or something when you're picking the fruit because you don't want to get those glockids in your skin, those tiny hair-like spines that come off and get into your skin. It's very hard to get those out. They'll naturally kind of eject themselves from your skin, uh, you know, over a few days time, but they're, they're really, really irritating to the skin. So I normally I'm very careful when dealing with any kind of a, a puntia cactus or prickly pear cactus, but I do love prickly pear tea. So this last tea that I got is, um, it's by a local maker. It's called Jill's Greatest Prickly Pear Green Tea. So it's actually really good. I got 20 tea bags in here. And so I used four, I filled this, this pitcher up and cold brewed it last night and just used four tea bags. And you can see the color is like, it's super, it's super rich and delicious. It's really refreshing. And then prickly pear nectar you can get also. And this is a concentrate. It's just the pure nectar of the prickly pear fruit. And there's another, well, there's two main brands who make this. There's Sherry's and then this is 
uh, Arizona Cactus Ranch. The Arizona Cactus Ranch does the no sugar added. It's just pure prickly pear concentrate, fruit concentrate. And then I think Sherry's does like sugar or um, syrups or something in there. But yeah, I just like to get the, the plain one and then you can make uh, margaritas or daiquiris. I would do the, vir the virgin versions because I don't drink alcohol. But um, yeah, I love I love doing like all kinds of ice blended drinks with this. For tortillas, we like Alejandro's for our corn tortillas whenever we do, we're doing tacos. And then these we haven't got to test out yet, but these are coconut flour tortillas because, um, well, I'm gluten free. And so I, I do like, you know, flour tortillas. I used to like them. I like the texture of them. Um, but yeah, I thought these would be good to try out coconut flour tortillas. So completely naturally gluten-free. I started doing a blog post series on healing your skin and um, you know healing from cystic acne. So th this is one of the things on my list that I cannot eat, but this is Michael's. I just want to show you, we got these, both of these, actually both of these products uh, are on my no-go list, but Michael gets to eat these and we got these at Costco. So the raw maca and then cacao powder. So it's just plain um, ingredients that you can add to his smoothies or whatever. Also from Costco, we restocked on our almond milk, so we both have like our different favorites. Michael likes to do biscuits and stuff where, you know, when he's cooking, he'll use just this plain Kirkland almond milk and then I'm always doing like my ice blended coffees and lattes and I like to do the unsweetened vanilla almond milk. We also bought this coconut milk at Costco a while back, but we're not going to be repurchasing it because um, it's just it's just more fat in my diet that like I'm trying to pack as much nutrients into every calorie as possible and I don't want extra fat calories if they're not like like doing something major for me you know so that's one that it tastes good you know but I'm gonna cut that out because uh, I use the fresh coconut chunks already from Trader Joe's so I don't want to like like overdo it with the, the coconut fat um, so even plant fat, too much plant fat can be too hard on the liver. Blackstrap molasses is high in iron, so we normally have this in stock and I'll add uh, just like one serving of it, you know, it just takes a little bit, little amount to some ice blended beverage or, or whatever. It's just kind of a fun extra ingredient to have um, and utilize for that extra boost of iron. And then when it comes to coffees, because I do drink coffee still, there was a period of last summer I kind of like quit for a while and I was experimenting with dandelion, like roasted dandelion teas and things like that, which I really, I really like. I found some that are really good, like from Ticino. For coffee, Michael likes to drink his coffee black, so he's got a Keurig and um, he, well, he may, he, he'll grind up his own coffee beans and stuff too, so he does both. But I like to do this Trader Joe's cold brew coffee concentrate, and I was just looking at the label here. It says that this whole thing makes just 12 8 ounce cups of coffee. But I was kind of laughing at that because actually for me, I do 32 ounce, like, giant cups of coffee, but I only use like a tiny bit because I'm only using this for flavor, so I just add like two little splashes of it. Um, so yeah, I get, it gets me about 15, 32 ounce cups of coffee. I splendid lattes. So anyway, I really, really stretch that out. It lasts me, you know, all month long. And then the Simply Organic Vanilla, this is the Madagascar Vanilla, non-alcoholic. Um, so it's just like uh, extract, vanilla extract, but it's in glycerin instead of alcohol which is, it actually tastes really good. I like this. So I've been using that in coffees and love it. I love the flavor of this. So as far as vanillas go, cause you know, vanilla, like all different extracts of vanilla have like kind of slightly different uh, strengths and flavoring. Have you guys had Hearts of Palms? These are so good. We get these at Costco. They come in a pack of two and I call these string cheese because they remind me so much of string cheese. Like something about the flavor, the texture slightly, it just, it just kind of is very reminiscent of string cheese, which I was a big fan of back when I used to eat a bunch of dairy. Um, so these are really good in salads and also I use them in dips. I'll do like a hummus with these with garbanzo beans in the Vitamix and just blend it, blend it together with a couple other ingredients. I mentioned we use these in salads and collard wraps and stuff too, right? And then also sushi is uh, kind of fun to have those into. It's just, it's just like the texture. It's a very meaty, meaty texture. So sometimes they have those at Costco and we always stock up on them. Garbanzo beans, 
just have a can of those. So I like to do hummus without any tahini or anything. Like normally hummus has like some sort of oil or uh, you know fat in it. But I like to do it like a no fat, no oil hummus. Dulse flakes is a good source of iodine. If you, you know, seaweed, seaweed, nori wraps, all a very good source of iodine. Most of our produce shopping is done at Sprouts and it is by far my favorite grocery shopping to do. It's like my, I love picking out fruits and vegetables. I do have a couple items from Whole Foods, like these dandelion greens I couldn't find at Sprouts uh, the last few times, so I just buy them at Whole Foods. And they're really good for you. They're, they're so cleansing for the liver, and you know the liver and kidneys are your body's filters, so it's really important to take very good care of your liver. And dandelion greens, bitter greens in general, are what you want for a clean liver, which in turn is clean, clear skin also. So very important to get your greens in, bitter greens, especially bitter leafy greens. Dandelion greens are one of my favorites. I will chop those up, um, you know, kind of shred them, put them in call, like rainbow collard wraps. I love making those. And then also uh, salads, of course, but I like doing, I like changing that up. You know, I don't want to eat just a salad every day. I want to like make, I like doing all, all different kinds of wraps pretty much. Also putting them in smoothies, green smoothies and I'll probably be juicing them too when I get a juicer, but I really like getting the fiber too, so I do like doing green smoothies with those. And then we've got watercress here. Oh, and I, I guess I didn't mention, um, I put them in jars, ball glass jars of water, which can just like you have fresh cut flowers, you know, just to help prolong the life of them, keep them perky and, you know, as long as possible. And then I've got some, wait, to, oh, I've got cilantro. Cilantro, a lot of people are kind of like, eh, you know about cilantro, they don't really like the flavor of it. I personally have always loved cilantro. I have a harder time eating parsley for some reason. There's just, I don't know, like we're all a little different, right, with our, our tastes. But uh, I love cilantro um, on all of my Mexican food. I have those in a little glass jar of water too. They, cilantro is one of those really delicate herbs, like the, the leaves are very uh, thin, and so they wilt really easy and they get kind of, uh, you know, icky. They can get slimy pretty easy too. So keeping them fresh and kind of like fluffed in a glass jar of water keeps them fresh for way longer than if they were just like left in the, a plastic produce bag, kind of smashed, you know, laying in your fridge somewhere. Um, so I find that I'm able to eat almost all of them. Like here's another jar of cilantro that I've had for a week. Uh, yeah, I think I've had this for a solid week and they're still, they're still healthy and perky enough to you know, to be able to eat, so they're still good. I love watercress. I actually want to grow this because I've, I've fallen in love with how cute it is. It's little round leaves. And this one that I bought, the particular plant that I bought, it came with all the roots and everything. So I just leave everything as is, take it out of its package, plop it in the uh, vase of water or jar of water. And I did have this at first inside the fridge, which it stays really nice in the fridge. It just depends on your area if these can be out on your counter or on the windowsill, or if they need to be in your fridge in the water too, you know? It just depends. Because here, um, if I have, like, if I leave my mint out on the counter, even though it's in water, it still, it dries out really fast because that's just how mint is. It needs a lot of moisture around it. And so it does better if I have it in the water, in the fridge also. But some of these do quite fine just out on the counter. But we're in the desert and so it's like, it, it can be single digit humidity here, you know, like 7% humidity is extremely dry and so it just wilts, it causes the leaves to wilt. Whereas in your area, depending you know, on where you guys are at, uh, you might have higher hum humidity and your leaves might be perfectly fine. Like the more delicate leaves might be okay sitting out on the counter or on your windowsill, you know? So like these I have on the windowsill and they've been doing just fine. I have to keep turning it so it grows more upright because it'll continue growing this watercress. It keeps on growing with all those roots and everything. So that's a really fun one to have. And I just take the scissors and just snip it, you know, and it just keeps growing. Not everyone likes the flavor of watercress, but I actually can't taste it at all in green smoothies or, well, usually I'm using it in the wraps or something. I can't even taste it. It's just packed full of nutrients though for you. So it's an easy way to slip in uh, some more nutrition. These green onions, you will notice that some are hanging down over the side of the jar and then some are poking straight up. The ones that are poking straight up are newer. The ones that are hanging over are um, older 
and I had them out touching the window and they got too hot. The window got hot and they like just laid down. But they're still good so I can still trim them and keep eating them because they're still like quite, you know, perky and good. They just couldn't stand back up. But um, yeah, so those, I love green onions on potatoes. One of the uh, cooked foods that I like to eat because although I am going in a more raw direction, not 100% raw, but like I want the bulk of my diet to be raw foods, but I'm not 100% raw, you know? So I, I do eat like little cooked purple potatoes. These are really good. Oh, I like the fingerling potatoes too that are pink. Those are my absolute favorite but I can't always find those. But these purple potatoes are really good and so I'll just make like, they're like little miniature purple baked potatoes is what I do. And I'll, uh, you know, slice them open and add some, you know, seasoning, some diced chives or green onions in there and eat them like little, like little finger foods. Uh, this is the orange cauliflower, which I do love this. I, I like cauliflower, but I try to get the purple cauliflower. So the darker and more richer, you know, like the deep purples and the more colorful uh, fruits and vegetables, you know, they, they are more packed with antioxidants, right? So the deeper the color I can get, so that's why I like to go with the purple, um, the purple cauliflower whenever possible, but if they don't have it, I'll go for the orange too. It's good to always like cycle your food too, right? Cycle different uh, produce in and whatever is in season and it's continuously changing so you get a wide variety in your diet. I've got these golden beets. So I like to julienne the beets and add them into wraps along with the regular deep purple beets. Can I just show you this, how cute that little, it's like a little beet animal. Isn't that adorable? It's got like this little rat tail on it. Very cute little beet rodent there. And um, let's see, what else do we have here? We've got watermelon radishes. I really like the watermelon radishes. I don't love regular radishes because they're, um, they're a little too spicy, a little too pungent for me a lot of times. But the watermelon radishes, which if you haven't seen them, they look like this. Well, that one's not as colorful on the, on the inside. It's kind of got a little more white in there, but normally when you cut those open, they'll be all pink on the inside and they're so pretty and so good for you. But um, yeah, they're a little more, um, subdued. They're not as like, they don't have as much bite and spice as regular radishes. So I'm always going for the deepest, richest produce. So purple carrots are my favorite. And then we've got a couple of the oranges in there. So usually picking out ginger, you want to go for the biggest, meatiest pieces with less of the little nobulets. I learned that from Tani Ra. Thank you, Tani, in case she ever comes across this video. Um, I, don't, I don't think she knows me at all on here, but um, I love watching her videos. I'm totally hooked on them. But yeah, that, um, I don't know if that, I mean, it's got some nubs on there, but I tried to get some what was available, like the bigger, bigger, chunkier pieces, because they're juicier and you get more, more for your money, more out of it. I've got some tomatoes over here. These are Michael's. Um, okay, sorry, I had a little intermission there. My camera stopped filming because the card was full, so I had to just swap that out. We we're talking about uh, tomatoes. Um, so these are Michael's. I just got them the grape tomatoes and the little orange sun, sunset tomatoes. We've got some baby bok choy, and I will buy the little baby ones. Like, look how cute that little, that little one is. Um, so I like to do these in, well, uh, wraps, stir fries, salads, anything. And these bigger ones, I like to do fresh and make little miniature raw wraps with because these leaves are just perfect and they're so flexible. Red cabbage is one of my favorites. Um, I like to do either little tacos, like raw tacos with this, like, so you can just peel off the, well, the bottom's already cut, so you cut off that knob, the little, uh, the, you know, where the leaves grow out. So cut that off and then you can easily peel off these uh, little uh, raw taco shells, basically the leaves of the red cabbage. Or if I'm making like a wrap or something, I'll just, you know, slice slice them real thin and just spread it on onto your wraps or your salad or whatever, it, it's delicious. We've got some avocados hiding down here, some beautiful buttery avocados. Those are gonna be delicious. They're perfect right now too. So I, I will, instead of eating a whole avocado or like, I used to eat a ton of guacamole too, so, but since I've been cutting down on my fat, I, I will just eat half an avocado in a day and like spread that out. So I'm just trying to stretch my fat more than eating such high concentrations of it. Cause I could polish off like a whole like huge uh, thing of guacamole, like all by myself. Oops, sorry. Oh my gosh. Sorry, baby. Here, let's scooch you. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're not, we're not going to eat you. That's just, that one is not for eating. This is my little um, 
my little water plant back here. What is that? It's a philodendron, Hartley philodendron. I've got artichokes. I love artichokes. They're so meaty and the hearts of them, and they're just, um, I'm gonna cook those up for dinner tonight, probably. And this cabbage, this Savoy cabbage, is gonna be perfect for raw tacos. I was looking at that in the store, I thought, wow, that is just such a gorgeous creation there. It just looks so pretty. I don't know if it's gonna come up on camera, but the, the contrast with the veins, I just thought that would be just beautiful raw tacos, uh, raw taco shells. So I'll just pluck those leaves off, uh, put some kind of you know homemade spread in there, like a hummus or something, stuff it full of like, a, we'll do like rainbow tacos, like rainbow raw tacos, put that in the shell or the leaves and it's gonna be awesome for raw tacos. I can't wait to make those. And then one of my favorite vegetables is broccoli. I keep the broccoli in a little bowl of water uh, just to keep them fresh and you know firm and perky because sometimes they, they can get a little wilty. Normally we eat them pretty quickly, but you know, just helps them last a little bit longer having them, having them in a tiny bit of water. Um, this mint is not happy at all because I I kind of forgot it on the counter and even though it's in water this is one of those um, those herbs that it's too dry for it here to be out so it likes to be in the fridge in the water not out on the counter in the water it's so you can see how it's uh, it's a little wilty around the outer edge here in the center it's still still pretty good so I'm gonna eat that up. Some of the dinosaur kale, these are some little ones. I try to find the littler leaves, like the younger kale. Collards, these are beautiful for wraps. I love collards so much, so I always have these in uh, stock. Well, whenever you know the stores have them, uh, I always get these in. I like to trim off the bottom, so trim off the stem right about here, and then take your knife and see how the um, the stem goes up through there, how it's quite thick. You just want to flatten that out. So I'll just take my knife and just kind of you know, skim along there or a peeler, a peeler would work too. Just peel that to make it more flexible is all you're trying to do. And you can soak them in water a little bit too to make them more flexible or just leave them out on your counter for a while um, and they'll kind of start to get a little softer and easier to work with if, they're, if they start out quite um, you know, tough. But the leaves are just so strong that you can pack that thing full of your your rainbow vegetables and your spreads and everything. You can do like hemp seeds and get some of your overt fats in there, avocado, uh, the, the hearts of palm, I love those. I'll quarter those and spread those out through there and just make a giant wrap. I don't know if I mentioned the tofu yet, but we do have the Sprouts Extra Firm Tofu that we like to either bake or, well, yeah, we'll bake them um, just to get the texture, you know, get a nice texture on them. Cause I don't like it like feeling raw. I don't like tofu like that. It's gotta be, it's gotta have some texture on it. So we'll bake this and then, you know, cut it up and put it in with like broccoli stir fries, broccoli bok choy stir fries. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, these are those English cucumbers. They come in like pre-packaged. We got this at, well, they come in like a pack of three at Costco. So I normally get a couple packs every time we go of those. But I use an entire cucumber, like one of these large cucumbers, in a green in green juices normally. And so um, it's just a good way to get in like a lot of nutrients, green juices or green smoothies is what I mean. I've got some organic celery here, which I already got into this morning and started eating it. Um, uh, I put it in my green smoothie. Did I show you turnips? These purple turnips, uh, Michael got those at AJ's. Uh, and then coconut water is the last thing because I forgot to mention that earlier too. Michael loves this Harmless Harvest coconut water and we get this in a pack at Costco every once in a while as a treat, which I think he just now pulled up. So I'm gonna end this video because we're gonna probably start making lunch here. And thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys. Okay, I'm back real quick. I forgot one thing, watermelon. Sounds like it's ready to go too, so I think we're gonna crack this open right now. Okay guys, I just realized I didn't share any of the frozen stuff with you, so all the uh, frozen like fruits and berries that I like to keep in the freezer, and I like to use those in smoothies. So I wanted to make sure to include those in this video too. Um, it's the next day, by the way. Uh, I didn't realize that I forgot that part of the video until I was uploading the footage yesterday, and I was like, oh wait, okay, we'll just continue today too. So really quick, I'll share what we got at our, um, well, we did a little run to Sprouts and Trader Joe's just for a few things. Michael wanted to get some oranges and a couple things, um, and uh, like some Boca, Boca burgers. So I'll just share that stuff really quick. So we got his Bocas. What kind is that? Spicy chicken veggie patties. 
and uh, these vintage sweet oranges, which are really good. I think he got those at Sprouts. And of course, his vegan chocolate chip cookies from Trader Joe's, he loves those. And then I got some Kara Kara oranges. These are my favorite orange. Those are so good. They're like extra sweet and they're kind of pink inside. And I found my purple cauliflower. This is what I was talking about earlier. That they got a new stock of it in at Sprouts, so I grabbed one of those. This is so good and it adds a nice texture and kind of a little bit of a crunch to whatever sort of wraps or anything that I'm making, so I like to use that a lot. And we got a couple of tomatoes because we're gonna do tacos right after this video. Oh, and another bunch of bananas and more organic celery. So what I had in my freezer already was these dark organic cherry. Wait, are these organic? Yeah, they are. I got these at Costco, dark organic cherries, sweet cherries. So I like to have fruit and berries in the freezer ready to throw into smoothies and stuff. So I always keep our freezer stocked with this stuff. Also from Costco, they usually have a triple berry blend. So we have that that we normally have stocked and kind of changes from time to time. Um, Michael is just coming in here. And also we always have frozen bananas for throwing into smoothies, uh, green smoothies even, and smoothie bowls. So those are always really good. Michael also uses them in his uh, protein shakes and whatever he's making. The frozen stuff I have in the front here, some of this we just now got, um, but I do always have some of this in our freezer, the Trader Joe's coconut chunks. It's really good just to add a few pieces to any sort of beverage that you wanna make a little more frothy, a little creamier. Uh, that's really good. And then at Sprouts, I found dragon fruit cubes. I love dragon fruit, so I was really excited to find that because it's it's pretty pricey when you just buy the fresh fruit. I always stock up on those now that I've started seeing them there. And then also some rhubarb because it's high in calcium, so that'll be going into my smoothies too. And then peaches. And this is all unsweetened, so I make sure that there's no, you know, always check the ingredients, make sure there's no, you know, hidden sugars in there. And we've got pineapple chunks from Trader Joe's organic frozen raspberries from Trader Joe's, and then a couple more bags of peaches because I love using peaches in the smoothies. And we've got some frozen jackfruit and some acai for the smoothies. I don't know if I'm gonna get the jackfruit again though because there's so many other fruits that I really enjoy and I don't, I don't know how I feel about the jackfruit. All right guys, I gotta get all this frozen stuff put away before it starts melting all over the place. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you guys have an awesome day. Bye.